Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rangru. Hello, hello, hello. And we're coming to you today, Division 2. Over here on Sir and Rang, who do we have? On the left hand side, in the blue, we have Free Drommel playing Group Hartnick with a Maverick Income. And the right hand side, in red, we have Yamin with an exclamation mark playing the first French, also with, surprisingly, a Maverick Income. Uh, that really should just be the normal income at this point. This should be yeah. balanced, more or less. Uh, Everyone's but... seen Top Gun at this point. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, interesting enough, we actually have ourselves an opening tiger in the northern side, which is going to be cause Whoa. quite a bit of a hassle over here for those plucky, plucky French foreign legionnaires. Um, not a bad call, per se. I'm a little concerned because they do have the partisans, which can cause uh, a bit of a hassle, let's say. Yeah, northern runs are going to get completely hammered, but down south, that partisan runs, they are trying to get in all over the place. Men's going to blow up run transport, at least. They're probably not going to do all that much damage, but it's mainly just to cause a little bit of havoc right at the start. Actually, I do like this 45 mil call in on the, on the town. Usually you don't see anti-tank guns or really just kind of field pieces for obvious reasons, but if you can get someone in there and kind of lock down, like, oof, that GMC going down, um, and lock down one of those roads coming in, that that could really make life a little bit easier. Or at least yeah. force your opponent to kind of pull back. I'm sorry, yes, sir. Yeah, those 45 mils actually provide pretty good high explosive fire support as well. They're actually very good all-rounders. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's more, actually have the VK9 in there. Um, he's not going to last very long, I'm almost going to call it, because those uh, bimps are going to kind of come up and just probably slap him pretty hardcore. But the main attraction for me continues to be that tiger up to the northern side, as well as that 105 is going to start trying to shell him in return. As you might suspect, it doesn't go well for the 105. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting matchup. I mean, both sides are pretty deep infantry tabs, but the French just really have that better quality in infantry as we've seen in previous replays. Mm -hmm. So Farid is probably going to have to rely a bit more on his tank and mainly like Tiger and eventually catch the presence, as he does have a much larger tank advantage over the Amin, but this can be a map where it's it's 50-50 on using tanks. On the northern area, it's not too bad, but when you start fighting over the lungs, the northern hill, the southern town, tanks only get you so far, man. That's true. That's true, and right now we are going to see that Free Drama struggling to breathe as both lungs go over here to the French. But there's also a 50 mil mortar that apparently has quite an issue with the stand. Um, it just starts to just <laughs> obliterate one forest. Uh, no. He's an, mm -hmm, please. He's an anti-environmentalist. You know what? He's got the stars trooping right there with all the Molotov cocktails, so it doesn't surprise me. He's gonna burn it all down. Well, yeah, man. He's 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 raging against the machine. But they're changing fire now, going after those Atelier DCAs and those guys. Yep. M1 carbines are all well and good, as are the occasional P17s. They're very beefy squads, of course. Um, but against Stoss Truppen, I, I don't see this going very well. Yeah, it's mainly that half track providing some pretty decent fire support here. And there, it's just a good amount of long range, well, slightly longer range firepower. But now, with the T 34 being brought on up, I feel like Farid will be able to relieve his left and lung at least and get out back under control. Yes, indeed. Looks like he's got some very, very good coverage going on there. And his second T-34 actually being brought into the central area. I, I would say not too soon, but we are going to see a 57 mil to the northern side taking out a martyr. So he's giving his life, of course, for the entire cause as the 57 mil starts getting hit by basically airsats, MGs, and PGRNs like crazy. Yeah, I'm just seeing a heavy investment in armor as well as off-map artillery up north, which is definitely a good call if... Farid can clear this northern hill and capture it, just like how in other types of other replays, you get armor or anti-tank off into that northern hill, especially with a bloody tiger tank, you can just shut down the entire northern flank, especially against the French. True, but that's why the, that's why the French start doing things like bringing in their own crazy amounts of mortars, in fact we have a 60 mil engaging the town to the south, which is allowing a support to being pushed in, you know, east to west here. The VK-9 is going to keep him at arm's length for the time being, but all you need is one Zook. Indeed, indeed. And Yamin's play playing in the town is definitely one of his better options. Mm -hmm. As he 
I don't feel like you'd be able to get all the way to free Drommel side. The infantry disadvantage Rommel isn't that bad. But you can at least secure the two central flags in the town and maybe the run on the bridge. But even then, he still needs to just keep up the pressure here because this is perfect territory for him. I thought the Stu 42 is going to be very in, you know, pivotal in kind of reversing that control. You can see right now he's going to move southwest that second T-34. But if you turn your attention to the northern side, we do have Husadox, uh one falling back, but not a fresh one being for brought forward. And look to see Fareed indeed bring his troops forward in the next 10 seconds. Yeah. So the Ojega Pioneers being brought on up, but he doesn't have for that northern hill, he doesn't have too much to really follow on through. He's got like the Panzergrenadiers, like, yeah, a couple Panzergrenadiers, the T-34. But, but the probably not enough to actually secure it. But the 105 I was going to say is going to give us enough coverage. You can see right now the Sherman's taking some hits, the 57 mil's getting pushed back, and that's really the important thing. If the Sherman goes back and the 57 mil goes back, everything else is just oh, wow. extra gravy. Yeah, Mamsen to completely saturate the area forcing most of those guys to go back, but yeah, Panzer Grenadiers aren't pushing through, he's just going to temporarily relieve that hill from French control. Unless those Jager Pioneers can come in, there's still a render of opportunity for them to make a decent They're not going appearance. for it though, they're going to the southeast. Oh. Maybe he's I just pushing not. for 15-9 for right now though, because if you look actually, the lung, oh, yeah. he's breathing easier over here on his lung. The Hoosier Rocks that are being brought in, unfortunately getting Pounded, uh, not quite to paste, but it's pretty darn close. Sherman's gonna take out at least one of these Jaeger Pioneer squads so just with just support fire like crazy, especially with the 12-7s backing them up. Unless the, the tiger can rotate, yeah, he's rotating down and around. Hmm. If yeah, Roman mm -hmm. needs to play like rattle in these open areas. He can definitely capture that tip flag on the right. Uh, lung pretty easily and keep it under control, but if I think if he tries to push heavy into the opposing lung, it's just going to be way too costly for him. Forgive me, I think I was looking down to the southern side now. Uh, the town fight has continued to heat up. It's 13-11 over here in, in favor of Fareed. That's really because he was able to grab a couple of quick cheeky flags, which now are getting flipped the other direction. Now, um, also, I should mention, northern side, we T-34 was donated over here to that BIMP squad. And the Pikarans, at long last, are being brought on in. I think they're trying to engage the 57 mil. Yep, that's a very, very important target. 12-7, only slightly less so. But there are people we kind of talk about, and I think we've had this conversation as well. It's great to have the extremely large caliber off maps. But for me, I feel like a 105 gives me much more bang for my buck. There's better coverage, there's better consistency. Yes, I'm not getting crazy amounts of damage, but when the entire point is to suppress and force a fallback, I feel like the 105, you really can't beat it. Yeah, it's just a very nice mix between firepower and actual suppression. Because, yeah, in the end of the day, like, the best off-map strikes are really just used to force enemy off points and then follow on through. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing once again here, all of those guys are being forced to bug a bag. And now Fareed is getting a decent infantry position on the hill. However, on the lower slope, Yamin does have a decent amount of fire support. And Fareed doesn't have the ability right now or doesn't want to risk moving up his tank to try and provide fire support. And that, I think, is a bit of a shame, because I would like to see the Stu-42 actually get brought to the east. Does it have a ton of anti-tank? Absolutely not. It has six shells at this point, but you have it to keep the infantry off the slopes. It's great to have armored fighting vehicles in the area, but tanks don't take and, and, you know, and, and hold ground. That's the job of the PBI. Yeah, and the PBI are really having a poor bloody job right now up north. Those Panzer Grenadiers are... Uh being utterly suppressed. We've got last off-map artillery strike here, but that's not, even if it does hit all those guys, it's not going to do too much as Fareed doesn't have a whole lot of troops to follow on through. So you're just saying the PBIs have a PBJ, sounds like. So um, yeah. unfortunately, I don't think they're really doing a great job. Um, <laughs> I'll see myself out. In the meantime, looking back to the southern side, these legionnaires have been brought on in because we are right over here on the brink of going into phase B, which I actually think is a really great call to go late stage with phase A. You now have the opportunity to see where your opponent's putting a lot of his units. And these legionnaires, these are the guys that take and hold. They have the yeah. frag charges. They have a great weapons loadout. 
these are the guys you wait to see where anyway concentrated, and then you send them in there. I think that's a great, great call. And they're going to be very tough to route out because of that bloody fanatical tree. And we do see Rommel bringing in the mortar. It's definitely a very good call. Very, you know, constant pressure on that hill. Accurate firepower. But he's needs to build a good strike package of, you know, a T-34 to a couple squads of infantry. Yenny could really secure that northern hill if he manages to follow through, and he's just kind of squandered the opportunity a bit. Yeah, and at this point, too, the Tiger is great at being much more active than just a, a pure fire support role, and I feel like he's been kind of squandering that 130-point call-in. Yeah, and we're seeing actually two P-47s being brought in, trying to kill the Stu. Does a lot of damage, but no kill. And it's actually... Okay, not a huge anti-aircraft present, but still enough to make those P-47s think twice about sticking about. Well, I want to kind of call it, there is an E-1 mil how track on both north and south. So you're saying about trying to make sure there's an effective strike package, which is very, very true. Um, but I don't think it's going to have the same kind of salience over here on the southern side that it does in the north. Meanwhile, M4 Sherman and a T-34 are going to have a wet noodle contest where they can both technically kill each other. And... And the emphasis on technically. <laughs> technically possible, but they'll probably run out of ammunition before that happens. And then yeah. Reed has definitely lost quite a lot of momentum since the early portions of the map. I think he's trying to regain a bit of that up north. I mean, Yaman's still holding that point pretty strong. I think Yaman just needs to try to push maybe the opposing lung position again and just keep that pressure up in the town. He's been pushed back a bit in the town, but it mainly just due to your armored fire support and that mortar being brought in up, but I mean, you know, you're playing the French, you have some bloody fantastic infantry. And some nice fire support yourself, too. You just see right now we have a lot of mortars. Actually, he has the potential to bring in 12 between 60s and 80s. Got a couple in the town already. Gonna be decently effective with those. Just to see if there's anything longer range. There's a 105 powers to the north. But no, I mean, it's just an 81 dueling is a 60 mil. 260 mils, in fact. I guess... I think I'd like to see the 60 mils be used in a much more front-line support, as opposed to trying to suppress the 81 in the back. Yeah, they're not good for counter-battery fire. You want to be using them to pinpoint enemy infantry squads like the Hoose of Rocks and just annihilate them. Especially against, say, a mortar half-track. Yeah, you're not going to do too much damage. No. No, just like that uh, VK-9 is not going to do a whole lot of damage to a fully armored and operational battle station. I mean, Sherman, <laughs> inside that town. So it's just some interesting decisions here. I say interesting the same way that your teacher said it's interesting when you're like, yeah, I'm sure it's interesting, but kind of more like, what are you thinking? <laughs> sure, uh, we're taking off a question. <laughs> Moving forward to T-34, going into that town, um, and there we go, finally, the 60s are starting to engage the Reitz of Jaegers, which is a much better call, or at minimum, between the Reitz of Jaegers and the front lines are going at those 45 mils, those would be the arenas in which to look, not, not again, look at the front line, the back line positions, of course I say that, I look back, and the 81 was taken out by it though too, so, oh. I guess I'll see oh, myself wow. out. That's, I'm actually quite impressed by that, that's... At least I'm assuming so. At least I'm assuming I'm going to so. assume that as well. Or maybe it was the Shaman. No, it's, no, no, it had to be. Anyway, it's dead. It That's is dead. That's all that matters. It's not coming back. There's no revive mechanic. That's right, Jim. It's never coming back. It's never coming back. Here we are seeing a whole heap of armor support here from Fareed. I feel like he's trying to push across this plateau and just, you know, bugger the hill, bugger the forest. We're just going to balls on right through and just try to shut it down. And he is in a position to do that. The Northern Hill, I mean, there's a lot of bit of anti-tank on both positions, but if he was used as armor, I feel like he can afford to engage in that tank engagement. Yeah, I think so too. Unfortunately, he's not gonna be able to, to zone off the Marquis Suds and the Legionnaires that are being brought on in, but there's enough armor wrapping around the Northern part of that hill that maybe, oh yeah, wow, that's a very, that is a rather unique path. We don't see that path ever get used. For the T-34? Yes, sir. Yeah, and that's a... It's actually surprising we don't see that being used as often, because that's a very good way to just 
try to provide some sneaky backline fire support, yeah? And maybe pick off a unit or two before they can get onto the hill. I think it might be because people are so afraid of edgelording, which, you oh, know, yeah. as, as, as a chivalric move, I completely understand. As a tactical one, I don't. No. It's a really, really great way to kind of stem any kind of tide coming on in, because, again, they don't have the anti-tank to really be super efficient if the opponent is facing them. Yeah, that's really what Fareed needs to get his tanks into good positions to really just pound his forest positions. Even down south, if Fareed gets like fully pushed out of the town, he still has a very good amount of fire support, which he can just use to make sure that the French never leave the bloody town, one way or another. Very much one of those moments of, they, they can leave, but they'll be doing it in coffins. <laughs> yes. See the Legionnaires, in the meantime, uh, two squads pinned down, which, you know, they might be fanatical, they might just say the Legion only says die, but they are dying, and they are dying in droves. Yep. Yeah, good call to pull back. Fortunately for Fareed, like, it's, it, I'm so happy we get to see Hartney because we don't really see him much anymore. They have a lovely mix of light fire support vehicles, which are definitely helping out quite a lot in this case, until a Sherman rolls on by. A Sherman is a bit of a tough customer. It's a tough customer, yes, but it is a killable customer. It's a very killable customer. 50 mil, trying to engage that corner. Um, not entirely sure exactly what was going on there. We did actually notice a P-47 to the northern side taking out that flanking T-34. But there's so much junk in this area, the French can't stop that. Yeah. Like, like again... Please, just, if you want to mouse over that, there's like layers upon layers of units being brought on forward. It's actually quite impressive. Oh yeah, especially up north, holy moly, that's bringing in the Hungarian cavalry, quite literally. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry, you want to say that, sir, please. Oh yeah, it's like, this has been a very static B phase, really, where both sides, is, you know, have the opportunity of the income to make big pushes. And yeah, it feels like this will end up, unless, you know, something major happens in regards to an actual offensive push it's just feeling like a pretty grindy match yeah but there's nothing wrong with grind if it's like the right kind of grind it's not just a grind in that town i mean the great thing about this we've seen some very very interesting play on this northern approach some non-standard movements around this hill yes we've seen the lungs have have gone kind of seesawed back and forth and we're going to see right now a bit of a push on the back of P3 ends, which is a nice difference. Um, but with Sherman's engaging and killing a T34. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, I feel like with a, um, with a grindy match, Reed will be in a slight advantage just because he has more late game armor. Late game armor. Especially that, like, C phase hatcher card. That's throw bloody hatches. But you're that's, right, though. That's nasty. They really could be just very, very joyous kind of customers as well. So I completely understand. They could what you... be. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say that I kind of feel bad about is the 45 mil. Like I'm looking very briefly down to the south as martyrs are now engaging this terrifying, terrifying Sherman. Um, is the 75 mil, sorry, 45 mil is, is vastly underpowered against the M4. He might be able to kind of plink it to death, but... That's not going to be your first move. Yeah, it's mainly uh, for its infantry fire support and knocking out those half tracks. It can potentially kill those M10s, but you really want to be using the Marders for the other case. If I can turn your attention one more time here to the northern side, we have 10 squads of infantry, 5 already debarked, another 5 are being brought forwards. Yeah, this is the, this is the punch that takes Yaman off that northern hill for quite a bit of time. Especially if the Tiger leading the charge, there's no infantry anti-tank really to speak of. So if that Tiger gets into position on the hill, he can zone out and receive Stugs and or Stews and Martyrs pushing across the plateau. Yeah, he's just trying to make a kill and blow up north here. But there's Marauders and P-47s. So the Marauders are take out the infantry. The Stu goes down to one of the P-47s. And the other P and the other Marauder is going watching take out that Tiger. That would be heartbreaking to a certain extent. That's exactly what's going to happen, I'm calling it. He's taken some incidental, I think, fire already. Let's see what it does. Yep, and, <laughs> and obliterates a northern approach. 
Holy, who needs off-map artillery when you can just have temporary on-map artillery? I have never had a bombing run be that good. Ever. Yeah, I, like, how the infantry were lined up here, that, that was perfect. But it's not going to be enough to secure the hill. Oh no, absolutely not. I mean, and the weird thing is we have these martyrs, which actually are in a really, really great position. And the 57 mil might be able to take them out, but there's still more than enough time for the kind of pinned down infantry to kind of recover their wits. And yeah, good luck foot slogging away up that hill. That is a very, very, very difficult position to come back from. Yeah, and especially with all the Hungarians, as we know from previous experiences of Hungarian infantry, they may be a one-trick pony in terms of their firepower, but there's a lot of them. And that's the other thing too, you know, one trick ponies are still talented ponies. Mm-hmm. They're very good ponies. 40 mil is really heftily engaging a lot of infantry on that hill, which is good, don't get me wrong, he's got another 320 rounds, but now Pigrun's engaging him in turn. He's probably going to take out one squad, but I can't guarantee he's going to be able to do it consistently. Yeah. The problem of the anti-aircraft weapons that you do take a little bit more damage compared to ground fire. That Ron Panch Grenadier almost completely suppressing that Bofors gun. Southern side, in the meantime, we're going to continue to pivot back here for a moment. We do have a couple of, uh, of the M10s. And with P3s in there too, it should be fairly easy kills. The concern here is there's still way too many two or three to one kind of odds down here. So good luck. That's not going to be a long-term thing for success, I don't think. Yeah, and Yamin does not have the tank number, or tank destroy numbers in this case, to actually sustain tank losses. Like, he's just going to have to get, you know, two to three kills for every one of his M10s just to try and maintain equivalency. Which is kind of weird when you think about it, because if you go just strictly by tank tab, it should be fairly even. Um, unfortunately, that is very much not the case. Yeah. Because you have the, the support guns. Tab really, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the support and anti-tank tab really tips uh, balance into Fareed Rommel. Well, in the meantime, M10 the meat is going to be taking hits from that 50 mil mortar. And again, I kind of feel like technically that should kill if they drop one right on top of it, but we know that's rarely, if ever, going to happen. Yeah. There's no bullseye like hitbox on any of these units, unfortunately. Oh, damn! M10 gets sniped, yeah, I believe, by the Panzer Free or something. Well, yeah, I think the one that just that just perished over here yeah. in the meantime. P47 going to go to pick up that Martyr. Question is, can the ground fire punish him? Because there's still a hefty, hefty amount of air power that has not really been utilized. I say hefty amount that hasn't been utilized even more so than what they've already been slamming into the ground. We've had the B-26s pretty consistently. We've had P-47s pretty consistently. And you see right now, it also gets back and forth between the 1410, now 1311, yes sir. And it's going to be very important in the uh, later stages of the game to use the air power, because uh, Hartnick doesn't, I has a decent is anti-aircraft tab, no long range ATH in this case. So he needs to try and exploit the use of just, you know, those very effective bombing runs as we saw with very beefy aircraft. Those P 47s and Marders are hard to take down from 20 mil fire. I will say, I've been impressed by the effectiveness of the 105 Howitzer, the M3 Howitzer just now, in his anti tank role as it fires softballs at about 30 seconds, you know, 30 seconds a meter. <laughs> Um, Speed, it eventually gets you. Exactly, exactly. It's it's mailing it. And if the tank's there, that's great. And if it's not there, then somebody's going to get hit. Um, mm -hmm. But this lung position has been kind of a liability. This eastern lung position has been a liability over here for Fareed Rommel. He's lost an awful lot of equipment there. Unnecessarily, yeah. I would argue. It's a very good position where Shaman can use to just try and strike into the side of Fareed Rommel. Uh, current push. And it's going to be hard for Rommel to actually push into that forest. He doesn't... Yeah, he doesn't have any more off-map artillery left, or really much on-map artillery, apart from the single 81mm. He doesn't have a whole lot of bombing support either. And, of course, going CQC against Legionnaires is never a smart move. So he just needs to try and suppress the hell out of the forest, control the edges of it, where the flags are located, and then just 
that's really all he can do. Somewhat bizarrely, we're seeing super late game scouts being brought into the south, the Luke's being kind of thrown into the front. And on face of it, I was kind of confused, but actually I really kind of like this right now. Because you're using them to be effective against those Legionnaires, which, if you stay out of the TNT range, you should be okay, but the Satchel Chargers do have the potential to kill. They do. I do like very much Yamin's push in the town, how he's kind of just hooked around like the far southern flank and made it a very long front line for Farid Rommel to engage with. And there we go, the VK is taking some casualties here from the Suppers, and that's going to force him to back off. Yeah, and that's and that's the bit of issue I do have with that call in is that you it's a one yeah yikes is that one anti tank piece of material can cause way too much in the, in the way of hassles for you. Four squads arrive too late, three DP grins, and you know one right to Jaeger. But at this point, it's been you've lost initiative there. Yeah, really for Farid, his best bet is just trying to secure the far southern part of the town back. He's still doing pretty good 13-11 just due to his northern gains. Mm -hmm. But just, yeah, really just try to secure the far southern flag. And he does have potential in the central part of the town to push on through. Uh, Yamin's position is a bit reek here as he's investing pretty heavy up north. But that's just going to be, once again, CQC against the France. It's way too costly. Yes, it is. But that's why we're seeing, well, like, northern side, for example, we're seeing lines of defense. Uh, for me, actually, I'd like to see them get posted a little bit further, further east towards the slope. P-47 is making runs. That's not going to happen. P-26 Marauder, though, he's going to get bombs off on the Martyr. Probably won't die for this, but he'll want he'll want to have thought about it. Yikes, and the Marauder to the north. Oh, this is going to hurt. The Marauders are killing the Martyrs. What has the road come to? Kind of makes sense when you think about it, though. Yeah, and we got a good follow up here of Yamin with his. Oh, wow. One of the spam. Oh, one wow. of B26s is taken down by ground fire. Wow. That is half of his B26 is gone, so the terror has been just cut in half. That's a pretty good snipe. I'd be curious to see if Yamin's push up north will be enough to actually secure the hill. It's not as much tank fire support left, and. There's a decent amount of infantry from Farid, but Yamin has way, way, way more infantry. That's true, but now Farid has brought in a new type of terror, the HE-111 he should have been able to bring in the Phase A. He brought it down south, and you know those three squads that were holding them up? Oh. Do you see that smoking go? crater where that town used to be? Uh, yeah. If you, I think uh... I see some capes in the crater. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. If you uh, if you see some kind of bloody bullion base, that's not that's not any kind of Russian dish. That that's that's the French, unfortunately. <laughs> They're all over the place. Very much so. Marky Sars are making a push in Northern Hill, um, and it's great they have the Raider trait, but these guys are made to get much closer than they really have the opportunity to get here. Like, I mean, yeah, long range firepower is pretty crap. It's all about once again using the Molotovs and the stems. Mm -hmm. If Farid can just, you know, he does have a good like killing uh, field of fire for him to actually blow up his Marky Sards. But there's also this amount of fire support from Yamin's side. Those one of the fives are providing constant but very slow fire support. True. True. Um, town is starting to go back to Farid here. You're right to say that the French do have a quality, but the quantity does remain over here with the Hungarians. Yeah. And we're seeing that evidence pretty closely now. Yep, 50, 50 mil mortar engaging a command sappers, which, while it may not immediately get a kill, will continue to suppress and allow the right to Diego to move on in. And when right to Diego set up shop, oh man, they can ride on you know straight to glory there, so... Indeed they can. It always been a very odd unit to use. I, I think Eugene was utterly trolling us by adding the three guys with the car 98. Then any time you try to move up the right Jaegers and you don't turn off the car 98 at long range, you just have the three guys plinking the boat actions. And then you have the dude with the SMGs and the assault rifles going, Come on! We, we, wanna, we wanna go! 
We can't shoot. Yeah, yeah, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Um, but if they just all had MP44s, they would just be stormtroops. They wouldn't be right to you, so would they? <laughs> God damn you and your historical accuracy, Eugene. Well, then at that point, they've got to go and just buff out the unity roster somehow. Yeah. I've um, seen mm -hmm. one of my favorite units being brought onto the field. The Act Panzer 38T, otherwise known as the Hatcher. Ooh. And just just look at that sexy beast gun. The ergonomics inside of that thing is utterly superb. Just ask any German tanker. Yeah, I will say it is ridiculously tiny. If you've ever been lucky to see them live, they are extremely tiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yep, whoever made that clearly was a bit of a masochist or a sadist, depending on whether he actually used the stupid thing. Um, or a Russian tank designer. Yeah, yeah, or a Czech, really. Um, <laughs> which I guess we you think about it, they're like, uh, who did this? And someone else is like, uh, Czech, please. And <laughs> and at that point, the Germans had to foot the bill. Um, <laughs> but in the meantime, um, there's no denying those things are ridiculously deadly for what they were trying to accomplish with them. So, Yeah, especially also just having those APCR shells. Mm -hmm. They... They can really punch above their rate, which is definitely overkill in this case when just fighting against a single M10. It's going to be about wherever you can get those Jag Panzers up into the north. Even though I have limited high explosive shells, you actually provide some fire support here because Yamin is slowly but surely securing that hill. Yes, he is, for the time being, I would say. I think it's just because he's, um, we are seeing Farid being a little bit nervous about investing too much artillery. He does not want that M10 to kind of peek over the hill and start to engage his vehicles down to the you know, the western slope. Does that be that be my my opining? Of course, uh, Marky starts in the meantime. As you can see right now, here we go. The Yacht Panzer is going to start putting some HE fire support on the hillside. And just the lack of infantry anti tank is really going to hurt Yamin. Exactly. Exactly. P-47 down to the south, going to go and is he he's, is he doing a blind bomber? Well, what he's going to be doing is going to be calling some issues here. No, he's not even going for a bomber at all. Ah, I guess he's just going for a lot of flyby, just want to inspect the other side's lines. It, it seems certainly to be the case on that one. I, I hope he knows this is a no-smoking area, though. Yeah, I think he's been well-informed. Well, he's, he's certainly getting away. He knows not the smoke in this particular region, so... um. Looking back to the northern side as the fight fighting heats back up. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen such a grindy thing over this little hilltop right here. This is the little round top of eastern... Because I'm not sure which your actually is, I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's in Belarus. Ah, so it's okay. So, Belarus over here. So, Belarus kind of an area. Okay. Yeah. It's really just so Jack Pan just get, finally getting into a good position... I think Yamin's just lack of tanks is really starting to screw him over. He's lost a lot of his Shermans and M10s already. And by God, he doesn't have a whole lot of them left. Interestingly enough, I'm surprised by the amount of HE on the Panzer. Oh, Legionnaire is being thrown onto the northern side, but uh, being encouraged to back away to the other side of things. Is that HE-111 again to the south? Yes, HE-111 again to the south. He's not smoking, but I'll tell you what we'll be smoking in a second. Yep. Superiors. And yeah, falling back. Yeah. Ridiculous amount of firepower here. Yeah. That's just a good infantry spam here from Free to try and push back into the town. Once again, he's probably not going to get into the center, but he at least secures the far southern tip, which is really the important part here. It's a piece of me that wonders. Oof. Uh, softball just took out one of the Ogpanzers. And is that the, Mara the other Marauders coming back in? So I'm, I'm going to call it this other Marauder probably going to go oh, no. down. Just how much fire firepower is on the ground. Yep, yeah. there we go. And that is a problem. That's a very big problem. Yeah, it's a very close quarters, but deadly German anti-aircraft net roof. Four, five, six, yeah. 20 mil guns is going at it. Probably lucky over here for Yaman that the anti-aircraft positions, or at least the flak tracks, haven't moved forward to be used in the anti-infantry role. Because oh, yeah. all those Marquisars and Legionnaires would just be, well, kind of pasted. 
But we are seeing a 14-11 as we go into the 35th minute of this particular match. We are going to have, well, a, a small breather as the next uh, Hussar wave gets brought into position. I don't know. I'm not sure how Yaman can pull this back. I feel like, like you said already, a lot of that armored vehicles have been killed. And, and as talented as infantry might be, I don't know if they might be able to turn this back around. Yeah. I think Farid has done a very good job of forcing engagement throughout this match in his favorable terrain, which is out in the open. I mean, down south, he's managed to at least zone off and not completely lose it, resecuring his light uh, lung position, and then just a lot of open areas in the plateau, and just the northern position. This is all areas which Farid wants to engage in. And as we're seeing, this Yamin tries to mount these attacks. He's making good progress up north, just due to the sheer rate of Frenchmen he has at his disposal. But he needs to get to the other areas of the map, and they're a bit too dug in. I'm actually quite impressed by this machine gun battery that we're seeing. There's three uh, Airsats MGs. There's a fourth one who's just kind of chilling. But there are three MGs that were engaging these Legionnaires on the southern side of that north hilltop. And now we're seeing... Oh, yeah, there we go. See, there's the anti-aircraft net. Oh, yeah, baby, that's it. <laughs> they definitely went a little bit too close, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, with the flak building over here, with all those delicious, delicious 20 mils, you can see right now, there's... What are you going to do against that? It is, I think, quite literally impossible to stand up to just a wave of Hungarian troops. There's just too many targets. Yep. I'm very beefy telling get chat, yeah. Just a bit of extra fire support. I mean, also, I mean, Yamin has a good amount of fire support, but not in not as infantry killy, so to speak. Well, he does have that, but unfortunately they are by this water or ascending slowly towards that plateau. So that's just not going to be enough. Yeah, and then for Yamin, this is only a single flag, and he can't really push off this hill once he captures it. He needs to push... Like, really, the central position is his best bet to push, but that requires fighting out in the open. And then down south, once again, it's just, like, a single flag he could potentially capture, which... It's just very... He has to make very costly gains, or very costly pushes for very little gain. Yeah, I think I'm just going to continue to watch this northern hilltop assault between the flak track and Gage and Marquisards. We're seeing all the Grenadiers and the Pioneers being brought on in. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And see, there you go. There's the 105 Howitzer. Does a lot of damage, but it's taken forever to get one of them up there. And there's so much firepower from every single direction. We have four different MGs engaging infantry as a charge to come up, engaging infantry at the, at the the tip of the hill. And there's still just all of these men. One squad gets pinned and three more move past them. One squad gets killed. There's still two more to back them up. It's just there's it's just a wave of Hungarian barbarians. <laughs> yeah. And the M10s are coming in. Lot of, right, I say a lot of machine gun, but he doesn't have that much machine gun ammo or HC ammo. No. And the 410 puts paid on that particular account. Which I was actually kind of concerned we weren't going to see a 410 at all. But, uh, you know, at least that, that's one thing we don't have to worry about. And Yemen taps out. Honestly, I agree with that tap out. Yeah. GG. And very close KD. Holy moly. Part of that's helped by, I think, losing some of the more beefy squads. Um, they were looking at things like, really, a lot of the infantry, 30 points, largely across most of Hartnick. Well, 25 or 30, really. Just a stop shooting an A, but ones who are not. And honestly, dropping a couple of Tigers here and there, that, that's also going to go and, and boost that pretty hardcore. Indeed. Then looking at the kills. Nothing really catches my eyes it's very spread out yeah and the same thing kind of happens over here in the losses as well with the he 111 killing the three with that one magical bomb run and the hussars over here in the meantime well, one squad of hussars kurta who kill four squads and actually that makes me wonder going back to that b26 that killed the tiger you only killed one of the mortar yeah so oh. when it comes from the hungarian kind of push Pretty consistent all around when it comes from the French side. Again, pretty consistent all the way around. Nothing too crazy from either side. But any final thoughts there, sir? 
No, no, just uh, nice to see Hartnick. It is. It is. It's nice to see Hartnick again. But folks, that's going to about do it for us right now. Of course, back on Thursday with some, another replay. Um, until that time, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.